Hi there, Mrs. Kang here to record a Latin Primer A video. Our class is this week. We did chapter 14 and I'm going to do a quick review. So if you can take a look at the screen, we'll get going. Chapter 14 at the top, you'll see them chapter maxim, Wenny, witty, wiki. I came, I saw, I conquered. Julius Caesar said this. And this will be your maxim for chapter 14 and the next chapter. Now, speaking of the next chapter, um, it actually, um, there you go. There it is, Wenny Witty Wiki. We're going to do two chapters this week. Uh, we have a new chant that we're introducing. It's called the second conjugation verb. What that means when I say second conjugation, that means if you look on the back of um, on these Latin chants, we actually have four kinds of verbs and they're identified by their endings in the infinitive. That's the second principal part. The first kind of verb ends in A-R-E. Those are the kind that we learned from chapters one to 13. And they end in A-R-E, verbs like amo, amare, do, dare, intro, intrare, and so on. The second kind of verb that we will learn in this book is a second conjugation. It ends in, in the infinitive, the second principal part, in a long E-R-E. Now, you must say long E-R-E. You must. It is against the law if you don't say long E-R-E, because this this third one, this third kind, this irregular, wacko verb here is uh, also an ERE. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. You must identify this as a long ERE. This is a short ERE. And then the fourth kind is IRE. So verbs are identified, categorized by their endings in the infinitive, A-R-E long E-R-E, -E, short E-R-E, -E, and I-R-E. Okay, glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> All right, so right here, second conjugation verb, they have an example, amen, thank you, Jesus. Same as on our shirt, on our sheet, video, video. So let's take a look at that, video, video, widere, widi, wisu. I see, to see, I saw, seen. I see, to see, I saw, seen. Now, clearly, you can see that I, I use a color system. All my verbs are green, and I color endings. I color endings because I want to train the eye to separate ending from the stem, because Latin's all about stems and endings. So, O means I. These are seven. There are seven subject pronouns that are easy as can be. I and we, he and she, it and they and you. Seven subject pronouns. The subject pronoun actually goes on the end of the verb, on the stem, on the stem. I see, you see, he, she, it sees, we see, you all see, they see. There is another option, a way to translate that, I am seeing. You are seeing. He, she, it is seeing. We are seeing. You all are seeing and they are seeing. That's the progressive. It's, it has a name. It's called progressive. There's a third way to translate in the present tense and it is, I do see. You do see. He, she, it does see. We do do see, you all do see, they do see, and this is called the emphatic emphasis. Okay, very good. So you're going to get that right there. And now, ta-da, the vocabulary. Widio, widere, widi, wisum. I see, to see, I saw, see. Tenio, teniere, tenui, tenatu. I hold, to hold, I held, held. This is the verb. The word tenacious. When someone is tenacious, they are not letting go. Do you remember the story about Jacob wrestling with the angel? He wouldn't let go until he blessed him. It's a good attribute to have, tenacity. 
And of course, those words that I just said, you can access them in your book in the derivative section. So just turn back a few pages right here, page 106, page 106, and there's your derivatives. Another reason why we study Latin. See that video? You've got your, your, your beautiful derivatives there. There's tenio, tenacious, tenacity. Okay, so you check those out on page 106. All right, check them out yourself. Okay, let's go back to our vocab list, please. Habeo, habere, habui, habatum. I have to have, I had, had. Iubeo, iubere, isi, isum. I order to order, I ordered, ordered. Now, I want you to pay attention here that there are two Two, two, you're going to say it again, Mrs. K? No, just three times. Um, spellings of this word. And, and there's a little asterisk right here, like, okay, what's going on? Well, good question. Right down here, look at the asterisk. This is the ecclesiastical spelling. And you like the what? Ecclesiastical means church. Okay, so if you look at the front of the book, we have in Latin for children primary, either the classical or the ecclesiastical pronunciation. Now I use the classical and they tell you in the very beginning, well, what does that mean? What's the difference? Oh, there's a slight difference, not a big deal. But sometimes to be honest, I think the ecclesiastical is a little easier for students because look at this, jubio, jubere, juicy, jusum. And I see the word, don't ask me why, I turned the letter B into a D and I see the word judge. I see a judge at, behind his uh, desk and I hear him saying, order in the court, order in the court. And, and he can judge people. I don't see that in I. So that's why it works better for me. And the other blessing of ecclesiastical is they pronounce their Vs. We don't, we say wah, 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 wah video instead of video. I prefer to say video, but I can't. We're in the classical pronunciation. All right, moving on. Algio, algere, oxy, octum. I increased, to increase, I increased, increased. This is a musical term. So if you play an augmented chord, you're going to play do mi so, do mi so. It's going to be increased. It's going to be a black key. That's where the term comes from. All right, we've got a second declension here. How do I know? Good question. Thanks for asking. Well, not just because I colored it blue, and, and you already know I have a color system in my teaching, and all second declension nouns are have a blue ending. Some of them have irregular endings, as you can see right here, and I actually wrote it in. It's not us, it's I-R, such as the word we-R, V-I-R, or agger, puer, magister, right? E-R, and there you go, agger, I agree. We know this is a second declension, not just because I colored it blue, but this gives it away right here, the genitive. The genitive ending is the letter I, and the genitive ending is the letter I. And that's the secret to identifying where a noun goes. What category? Does it belong to first declension? If it does, it ends in AE in the genitive. Does it have an I in the genitive? If it does, it, begins to a, it belongs to a second declension. Now, obviously, you can see here that second has a neuter. Why? I don't know. But it has a neuter. And so in that case, you must le learn two pieces of information crucial. You must learn the genitive and you must learn that nominative ending. If you don't, I mean, go ahead, don't do it. Then you will be confused. Confused? What do I mean by that? When, because Latin's all about stems and endings, you won't put the right ending on and then you'll get a big X. That's not a good thing. Not, some, not good. So you need to learn, when you learn a word, you need to learn the nominative and the genitive. Put it in a category in your brain. Then you can access it. So you can get the right ending because Latin's all about stems and endings. So agar agri means field. Now, poeta poeta. Hey, that's an AE. That noun belongs to a first declension. Most first declension nouns are feminine. Aha, 
we now have four nouns that are first declension that are not feminine. Put that in your brain. Poet, farmer, settler, and sailor. Agricola, agricolae, the farmer. Incula, incolae, settler. Nauta, nautai, sailor. Four nouns. They end in the letter A. When you decline them, you better use these endings. But when you describe them, they're a good poet. They're a bad farmer. They're a great settler. They're a bad sailor. Whatever adjective you want to use, you better use this. And what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about this. You better use this on your adjective to describe these nouns. Because adjectives match the noun they're describing in gender. Number. Number is singular and plural and case. If it's a subject, it better match with that subject ending. If it's a possessive noun adjective, it better match. If it's an, operating as an indirect object, it better match. If it's operating as the direct object, you have to have that ending, singular or plural. And if it's operating as the object of the preposition. So remember, adjectives match the noun they're describing in gender, feminine, masculine, or neuter, number, singular, or plural, and case, subject, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. Okay, I love that sheet. All right. So um, that's that for there. And um, then if you look at chapter 15, we have the same chapter maxim up there. And here's the vocabulary. Animus, enemy, mind, masculine. And if you want to look at those derivatives, you can see clearly here we have Animus is actually a word in English. Animate, animated, animator, animation, inanimate. Okay, so that's a tricky word. It has to do with your mind, right? Campus can't be masculine, level place, plane, and field. And actually that word is what it says. It's a campus. You go on a college and, and you see the area that the building is on. Anus any means year. These are all second declension and they're masculine and gender. You see the word annual, something that happens yearly. Um, holidays, right? Biannual, twice a year. Triannually, three. Um, annuity, all right? Murus, murus means wall. Um, and um, the word mural comes from there. Um, murus, muri. Notice they've stopped writing the genitive out. I'm not happy with that, but they're saving ink and time. Murus, muri means wall and murals are on walls, okay? Um, kibus, kibi, food. Do we have any derivatives for kibus? Nothing. All right, so you're gonna have to come up with your own trick to remember that. Went to swenti, wind. And are there any derivatives? Vent. So on our floors, we have the vent and the winds coming out. Excellent way to remember that one. Equus equi, horse. Oh yes, I know a lot of you take horse lessons. The equestrian center and equine has to do with the horse. Very good. Then we have ferus, fairy, a uh, wild animal. It actually looks like in the word, uh, ferocious, feral, yeah, yeah feral animals live out there in the wild. And the last one is fluvius, fluius, flui is river. And I see FLU means to flow, fluvium, to flow. That's what I see in rivers flow. So those are your derivatives. Uh, remember in, um, in my class, you must decline every noun and it's um, use your noun declension sheets. Um, here they are. Uh, write the nominative and the genitive here. Write the stem. You find the stem. If you read the directions up here, go to the genitive. You wrote the genitive there. Okay. Uh, cross out that genitive ending and you're left with the stem. So you're going to write that stem 10 times. 
write the stem 10 times and then add your endings. And if your noun is a first declension, then you're gonna write ah, I, I, um, ah, I, arum, is, as, is. If your noun is a second declension, like in this case, um, you're gonna write ooh, wait, what, uh, dashing. Us, e, o, um, o, e, orm, is, os, is. Okay? If your noun is second neuter, you're going to add these endings. All right, very good. I hope that helps. And keep up the good work. And we'll see you next time. Bye.